Right, this is my review of the debut album by Journey, which came out in 1975, described as progressive rock jazz fusion. Um, I have to confess that when this album came on out, I fell in love with it. A little bit of backdrop first though, uh, two of the members of Journey, Neil Sean on lead guitar and Greg Rowley on keyboards and vocals, of course had been part of the Santana uh, evolution that started with the third album when Sean joined uh, the band and started to learn every lead guitar trick in the book from Carlos Santana and uh, they then went on to uh, put together Caravanserai with all its sort of drug induced trance like sort of segued music which I consider to be possibly the greatest al album by Santana but then I'm for from Rowley and Sean's point of view Carlos Santana started to deviate off into the spiritual uh, hole with his collaboration with John McLaughlin Love, Devotion and Surrender and while they were doing all their diva stuff uh, Santana decided that that was the route that he wanted the Santana band to pursue so they came back and then Welpen came out and that basically uh, was the end uh, of Santana as we knew it at the time uh, this style of music just did not go down very well with Rowley and Sean who wanted a more sort of rock type phase rather than this sort of spiritual uh, Latin feel and so they basically split and then what happened was Journey evolved alongside the two of them was Ainsley Dunbar on drums who had just done a stint with Frank Zappa and so the album was released when I heard the first track of a lifetime I, I absolutely drooled over it um, Rowley's uh, vocals appeared to have improved quite a bit and Sean without playing second fiddle anymore to Carlos just let rip and this first song which is sex and nearly seven minutes long it just grows and grows on you uh, it's a it starts off very quiet with some soft guitar and then it just builds into an epic sort of rock uh, splendor and the back end of this you get to hear one of the greatest guitar solos of rock at that time uh, Neil Sean just opens his shoulders and shows how, what potential there was under the third album with Santana and he just comes alive there's a great blend of bass and organ as well and of course Rowley singing greatly improved no Steve Perry at this stage he came on board a couple of uh, albums later in 1977 second track on the debut album by Journey from 1965 is entitled In the Morning Day uh, written by Greg Rowley and Ross Valora the bass uh, guitarist and just to set this one up uh, very nice piano and organ intro and the beginning vocals remind me of Elton John that's what one critic said and then it takes a turn and begins to the organ rich solo and guitar uh, and that's the initial uh, thoughts of a review that I have on my computer um, so uh, now I'm going to listen to it myself listen to the song it's a pretty standard rock moment, but it's a ferocious guitar solo at the back end by Neil Sean. And I'm really impressed with Dunbar on drums. He really has a sort of energy and a, a punchiness to his play. Uh, standout performances. Track three is Kahutek, an instrumental song. The beginning's got a mix of piano, percussion cymbals and guitar. 
it's got a sort of dark droning quality uh, and uh, then it really uh, heats up midway and we get the synthesized keyboards and that uh, sort of synth synthesized sound that was popular with the drums particularly Carl Palmer uh, he he really did launch that style of echo dr drumming uh, with uh, synthesizers galore and then there's a, a, a absolutely mega solo again by Sean and I, I heard elements of John McCoughlin uh, with his work on the uh, first couple of Mahavishnu Orchestra uh, 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 albums the guitar style is as speedy as that um, a high compliment to, to be sure to one Neil Sean um, it's, it goes on a little bit uh, and it's uh, almost uh, a bit of a drone but uh, it's uh, pyrotechnics I guess that's the word pyrotechnics so uh, first track on side two is to play some music this is a pretty predictable MOR uh, rock song it doesn't do a lot to me but uh, whilst I, it was playing I, I checked out Ainsley Dunbar uh, on Wikipedia and, and the number of bands that he's played with uh, is he's 76 years of age now but uh, I'll just run through some of them just to give you some idea of the talent of this man he started off playing with John Mell and the Bruce Bakers back in 1967 and, and did four albums there uh, chipped in with a, 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 a drum appearance on Eddie Boyd uh, which featured Peter Green uh, it was on Michael Chapman's album in 69 Rainmaker then he formed his own band Retaliation and uh, from uh, 68 through to uh, uh, 70 uh, they released four albums Blue Whale was another of his creations in 71 and then he joined Frank Zappa and the Mothers of Invention uh, in 1970 and he, you can catch him on uh, performances right through uh, particularly I noted he, he played on Apostrophe an album I really love and also uh, post uh, Zappa's death he's uh, come up on a number of albums uh, David Bowie he played with in, on Pin Ups and Die on Dogs he played with Lou Reed on Berlin uh, what else have we got here Mick Ronson on a couple of Mick solo albums in 74 75 he played with Neil Slofkin on Cry Tough which is an album I really love uh, he did the four albums with Journey from 75 through to 78 uh, and then uh, he also had stints on Jefferson Starship albums from 79 to 82 and oh well I could read them all but we'd be here till tomorrow uh, it just has to be said that this uh, drummer is one of the greatest rock drummers and uh, jazz drummers of all time rock blues jazz Ainsley Dunbar born in Liverpool the next track uh, is Topaz it's another instrumental and it's gorgeous it sort of incorporates elements that are definitely Santana influenced and then there's some sparkling piano once again I highlight Dunbar's drumming and at the back end Scott Sean uh, dips into uh, Wah Wah uh, Robin Trower Jimi Hendrix style um, which you know however there ain't no congas on here and um, that's probably just uh, uh, identifies a major difference between it and Santana but it's still a ballad a sort of slowish ballad uh, uh, at its um, birth I would suggest um, but altogether a great rock uh, song 
the last two tracks in my lonely feeling and mystery mountain become a little bit of a sort of going through the motions as far as i'm concerned and they were uh, for me a, a one album uh band i i i i i tried to follow up with the second album next and i just they become so middle of the road and i i, I really not get into the stadium rock uh, phase that uh, went through those 80s never really took to any of those bands I just found them mundane to the extreme but this first album still ho holds up for me uh, and you know Sean and Dunbar are the standouts uh, but Groly very professional uh, and a very good uh, producer and engineer, Roy Haley. Uh, it doesn't mean much to me. Uh, but there we are. That's my take on the first. Oh, lyrically as well. Uh, very middle of the road. Um, not worth mentioning, to be perfectly honest. But that's my take on the first journey. Um, uh, simply titled Journey. <laughs> 